the Hal Bechikoy side. So we start off in the beginning, Yiddish and English. English. Uh, English. English. Right. So the subject of the Shabbos Sulez, the beginning of the Parshus title, the Hal Sinai, the, 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 the instructions for Schmidt to be written by Hal Sinai, then the Pusik says, the Shabbos Sulez, Shabbos Dashem, that the land should rest a Erinnerung, so to speak, the rest of the Beutschwill, like it says on, on Shabbos Bereiches. Now, there's obviously clearly a clear connection between Shabbos and Schmitte, which we understand that in the same way that the person has got six days of the week and he works, Shabbos comes, there's many people that understand that they might clinch a very, very big deal just uh, on the winter Shabbos when it's like uh, Shabbos comes in very, very early. But nevertheless, if we believe that the Rebbe Shalem is the one that gives Chalusa, then clearly you stop work Friday afternoon and call Yoyme Yavim is but the rest of the six days of the week are blessed from the Kölk of Shabbos, and that's why we are making Chalusa. Similarly, Shmita too, that is the test of Schmitter, the, the six years. Notwithstanding the fact that the farmer is going to put down his plow and his equipment, close up shop for six entire years in order so that the one year is resting, this is the color of the remaining six years it gives him Panusa. And that's why Schmitter is considered a test of faith. Same way the Shabbos we say askina sidusa the Haimanisa, that the sidus that we eat in Shabbos are sidus Haimanisa, feasts of faith, because an industrialist will attest to the fact that the greater the person spends time, the more time he spends working in Genesis, greater profit. A workaholic will probably stand to earn a lot more. That's in his mind. But we give testimony to the Rebbein on Friday that we believe that the Rebbein created the world. He is the one who gives Panusa. And that's why the Chazal referred to those farmers as Giboire Koya Oise Duburoi, men of mighty resolve, people that are able to literally close their businesses. When you think about the real terms, one thing about closing it for a day, but to lock the keys and then leave the office for 12 months is a completely different story. That's really, see, this is the Hamidis, as we could call it. So now, you would ask yourself a question. You know that it says always the famous Rasha, Mayin Yishvit, it's a Hal Sinai. Which we say, well, what does it say? Hal Sinai, right? Whereas if there's some particular association. And the terrors which the Rashi says that Schmidt is called to the same with the Kerodim and the Sinai, that they were all given at Sinai. Similarly, all the others are the same. But there is something specific about how Sinai, which has always been a problem which many people who are borderline and they are middle grapple with, and that's about the question of Terror and Hashmai. That was the Louis Jacobs affair in England about a man who was a huge Thomas Kochum, but when it came to the subject of Terum and Ashmai, there he started to falter, and there were questions about, was it really God-given? And that's uh, a shadow which is very strongly associated with Schmitter. And then we'll see the connection. Because who in their right mind would underwrite a check, blindfold, for anybody that keeps this mitzvah, that I will be the one to look after him for three years, notwithstanding the fact that he's going to close shop for 12 months, so the sixth year, and the seventh year, and part of the eighth year, all covered by this. The only one that could do and make such a promise would be the one who created the world. And therefore, if he wrote the Torah, and he writes into the Torah, if you will have such a question, then I underwrite this check. He is very much a shaykh as well, Torah and Ashmai. And now we have a little bit of a different blink, a different look of Ma'inian 
Shmita, it's in Har Sinai. Well, very much so. Shmita in Har Sinai is to say that Torah is in Hashemayim. Then you've got it. If you want to know the greatest proof of all, just check the text. There it says, and the Rebbein Shloel Amanda writes it. Test me and you'll see. Don't work on the seventh year. Leave your fields fallow. And I promise you that you will have Panusa for all those years regardless. And then you've got the answer to Bahi Ma in Yeshmita, it's a house in You know that the the let's check the time. Alright. There is a question, you know. A person worries about this panusa and he thinks to himself, you know, how could I live recklessly, carelessly, irresponsibly to the extent where I'm just going to close shop and not to work for an entire 12 months. Do you think about that when you go to sleep at night? Maybe I'm not going to get up in the morning, has to show. There are people that didn't get up this morning. And the question is, man, do you have chaya? You have mezayna. So if you're so concerned about the fact that you're worried about your income, and how are you going to sustain yourself? The same great one that gives you panusa, he, he gives you life too. So if he gives you life, he can give you panusa. But that's not something that crosses your mind. Somebody once came to the Kotzke Rebbe. And he told him, Rebbe Chanshka panusa. So the Kotzke Rebbe sat down. Pray to God. So he said, I'm not very good at that. Somehow I'm not so successful with my family. So God's Rebbe says, Rebbe says, that's a aggressive problem. You've got a much bigger problem than not having Panusa. If you ain't got connection with your Creator, that should be on the head of your list long before that. So let's understand this. There is a famous word, which is one of the couple which is related to the Heiliger Rebbe and that is something which is pertinent to that. So I'm going to tell you this small, but I'm, I'm just going to take an angle from the Svasemis. Svasemis goes just a little bit deeper on the same theme, but he presents it as follows. There is a concept of nature, and there is a concept of supernatural. So when we get up in the morning, and we see the birds chirp and the sun is shining, the sky is blue, and the grass grows. That's a natural phenomenon. Something we would take for granted. Why not? I mean, after all, isn't that what happened yesterday? And the day before too. <clears throat> but the moment that we start to segregate, that we start to separate, and we say that, you know, there is what's a given, and there is something which is supernatural. So now what we've done is we've made the nafkemina between teva and chitzle derech teva, something that's a natural phenomenon, which is really, in essence, the greatest miracle of all. The very fact that we are breathing, seeing, hearing, existing in a way that our bodily functions are actually working and that the world outside exists in the way that it does is an unbelievable phenomenon. But we suddenly made this demarcation and we say, watch, there is, of course, if you go to work, you are a living. But if you stop working, then you go past. It stands to reason, no? So Sassama says, that's the problem. We continue to really understand, to internalize and to recognize that the greatest miracle of all is in fact nature. <laughs> then there would be no problem, Schmidt. <clears throat> it's only when we start to establish that there is something which is a given, that this happens, and the supernatural, that's when the problems happen. So now that accentuates the vault of a Rebbe Gazish. Because he said, What will you say when we, what will we eat in year number seven? 
Hydrogen sovereignty, we haven't sown, and we haven't plowed, and we haven't done all the agricultural pursuits that we are supposed to do, then how are we going to make a living? Then the Moshe says, but you know, but Tzivi says, Perchusi, I will instruct my blessing to come to Chet Bashun Hashishis, and what will happen? For so says that Tzviyu Nishloi Shashun, and will make a turnover over three years. So the Rebzish's vote was essentially that the car goes sort of tugs along in neutral, but once you put the brakes on, then you have to put it into overdrive and to push it against the pressure which is going against you. The moment that you've asked that question, so you've taken away the tsunodas and the flow of the blessing. But once you've done that, but the Hawaiian said, I promised you that I'm going to give you Panusse Schmidt and regardless. So then the Tzivisius Bechusi, notwithstanding all that, I'm going to go into overdrive and I'm going to make sure that you're going to get your Buche regardless. Which is very, very beautifully how the Sassemis, how do you say, uh, explains it in greater depth in the same context. You know, I'll just share with you. A master Shahoyo, which was very much a Schmidt oriented one. And it's not to, to, to do with the fields, but it's a completely different story. There was a man in Bnei Barak, And the dinam of Schmidt are such that there is what we call Zvan Bio, that you have to take out of your shows things which are Schmidt produce at certain stages of the Schmidt year. This man was not such a youngster anymore. He had three boxes of wine. All of them were Schmidt produce. And when it comes to Manbior, however, you should take the boxes out of your shoes because now you have to be mafke there. He is on the third floor in Benebra. So him to start schlepping down three boxes of salt each downstairs into the chutz, into the foyard and the courtyard of the, of the building was a tedious task. And he didn't have the coif. So he thought, is a man who could learn. You know what? Let's do a shortcut. Phoned up three friends, told them, would you mind to come down to my apartment for, for a couple of minutes or come out. Pleasure. How long will it be? Five minutes. Fine. Okay. They came there and so said, okay, I just wanted to cover the basin. I've got three of you here, so let me just say, if I take my wine, I want to be a mafkate, I can't do so if the apartment belongs to me because it just comes straight back to me because it comes to my apartment. So what I'm going to do, I'll be mafke my apartment, in front of you, and then the three bottles of wine will be mafke in, respectively. And now I will save myself the job of schlepping all these cartons of wine downstairs to the front courtyard and to deem them onerous and they should be hefke. So he said, okay, we're listening. So he said, hefke, 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 I'm telling you now that the apartment is hefke, therefore the wine automatically is respectively hefke too. So one of his friends, in inverted commas, said, do you like to repeat that again, please? He says, yes, I just said to you that I'm deeming my apartment to be Hefke, Hefke, Hefke. It's, and therefore the wine is also, aha, okay, thank you. The friend goes over to the front door and he uh, closed the door, the door, the front door, he opened it and he closed it again, which in the Gemurim Mubasu describes it as Nural Guda Kipuritz, which means I have now made a claim, not a claim, I've assumed ownership on your apartment because I made a king in it. I've done the necessary actions. And he walks over to the, his friend and he says to him, you have 24 hours to get out of this house, it's now mine, and uh, thank you very much indeed. I'm the new boss. He 
it's you said self again. You do? Yes. Well, we've got three people here, they all witness the same thing. And now, the part of the fight, he says, don't be silly. So, no, I'm not being silly at all. I've been very, very serious. He says, you know what? I'll be a nice guy. The story happened 28 years ago. The department was worth them. This is a, a true story. 150,000 US dollars in those days. And he said to him, if you make an immediate cash payment, I'll accept the hundred. And you can have your apartment back. <laughs> I said to him, are you mad? He says, no, in fact, very welcome to ask by the local rabbinate and find out if I am. But I'm very, very deadly serious. Well, we don't know who to do. <laughs> the, the, the people in question here would not recognize the state of Israel as a dina the Mok as a dina, that I can assure you. Certainly not in, in Allah matters to do with property. So he left the apartment and said, I'll be back. And uh, of course the man went straight away to Abunam and to Tamil Chachomam and related the story. And they looked in complete aghast, astounded that this happened. But they recognized that the man in question knows how to learn. And they said to him, unfortunately, Halakha came is right. And in the Benegra, it doesn't take long. The story went, as we call today, viral. And the, the entire town was talking about the story about this fellow who is a Friend. And he came to be the president for three boxes of wine. He suddenly acquired an apartment worth 150,000 bucks. And what is going to happen? Because the rabbis have got no halachic exit whatsoever. A few days went by, and of course, the news reached all the way to Yerushalayim. <laughs> and one evening, he got a telephone call from a big, big Talmud Chochem. None other than a man called Reb Avrum Gelachowski, who was then one of the Magid Yishirim of Trevini Yishirim in Yerushalayim, a good oil. He heard about the story. He made a phone call to the owner, well, current owner, the previous one, and he said to him, please make your way to Yerushalayim, I'd like to speak to you, it's important. Rumi was a Uda Mochibet, he went to Yerushalayim, took the next chair, went, got there, took a Mochibet's house, he closed the doors behind him, drew the curtains, <laughs> and made sure that nobody was behind the door, and he said to listen very carefully to what I'm going to tell you. He said, I suggest the following. You have a third floor apartment, is that right? Yes. So you have a neighbor downstairs on the second floor who you know? Yes. Is he a decent, God-fearing man? Yes. Is he also somebody who is friendly to you? Yeah, we know each other for years. So, so let me tell you. But you must adhere to what I say to the mind you take, because one slip and you've lost it. The halucha is that if you put your... Let me check again to see if there's anybody listening by the window and nobody was there. You, if somebody finds a wallet inside your garden, then of course we know the din of chusa chatzayla shel which means that his garden and his property is able to acquire for him ownership of something without him knowing. Technically, the same thing will apply because your apartment is on the third floor that the moment that you relinquished ownership that the man beneath you is technically the chutzah which is going to be coined the entire part of the bucket. Yes. And therefore, without him doing anything, that chutzah is his. Now, it has to be exact. It's, it's, it's behind. It's, it's behind. behind. Wait. Right? So now I said Rabaul Kanachowski, but the moment that you're going to say something to him, which go along the line of, I want you to understand 
that this uh, you, you now own my sister. I don't. I didn't take anything from you. I wouldn't take anything from you. That is essentially a rebuffing of all this, and that's a really cushion. So you go there with another person and you tell him to keep his mouth closed until he finished the entire discourse. And he shouldn't open his mouth, neither should he say anything to the contrary. And when you finish, then you'll say to him, now let me ask you, since this apartment is still technically yours because you have not said to the contrary, would you be prepared to have the ownership and then return it to me? And of course the answer will be unquestionably yes. But if beforehand he says to me, no, no, I wouldn't take your pardon for anything, yeah. then the other guy's got it. Yeah. And that's why I called you here, close the doors and make sure that nobody else is listening, because this is pivotal and axiomatic to the very essence of this transaction. Go home, prepare the story exactly like I told you, take with two witnesses, and you'll be home and dry. Forgive the pun. He went back and quiet of the night, he went to the neighbor, closed all the curtains, locked all the doors, went in there with two friends and repeated the entire story, warning him, please, my friend, don't open your mouth until I finish the whole story. I beg of you, this is important. Listen to the whole story and then he said to him, okay, I've got it. It's mine. I received it. I've coined it. And now, in front of this item, I give the balance back to you with whatever key it was necessary. Rabbi Avon, Gerechowski, Zayat Tzadik, the Kuche, was the Guren Oilum, saved the day from this man. And regretfully, the other man went with an ignoble reputation for the rest of his life around the neighborhood. <laughs> Okay, a little more. Yeah? Okay, I finish off with one more thing. I don't keep the time. We okay with time? Yeah, yeah, we're okay. Yeah? Okay. All right. That was the Adukha Now, there's, we have to finish with something on the Chikoise as well. In fact, you know what? There's a nice, there's a nice master that happened with a Lua's Mumoy. Now there's also a dinner by Nuas de Hurem. In the Nuas de Hurem, there was a story, a beautiful, you know, it says, Le Soin Ish is Uche, a person should not oppress the other one. There's a Nuas Mumen and there's a Nuas de Hurem. Something which very close to a Nuas de Hurem we just described. But a Nuas de Hurem means to oppress somebody with nasty words and to say something that has a put down. You know that the Hasidim say, I think it was in the name of a little from Chisra, he used to say that there's a, a new room that you're not allowed to, to, to cheat somebody either. That is also in the gate of Inur. And to deceive somebody. So, Hasidim do everything that's the description of a chuset. Somebody who does lifnim mashir sadin over and above the line of the law. So when he is kind the mitzvah of Inur, so in Yiddish they say, er soll sich sehen, sich allein nicht optional. He shouldn't cheat himself. And so if the mitzvah is not to cheat somebody else, how much more important is not to deceive your own self. So don't go to those things and have ideas and concepts in your mind which are really not belonging to you. And keep within the vicissitudes, as they say. But there was a master, which I've tried to remember, I heard it from from France, but, uh, that there was a newest of whom was a story with a heat who was a, in, in those days in Poland. In fact, they used to go when they looked for new roof of a town, they used to invite a couple of people to come, and the potentials used to come for Shabbos. And the, the one who was most favorably accepted, he was the one that got the, the job. So they had a couple of Rabunam come, Shabbos, and the first one was there, and they wrote a nice exception for him, and they wrote Zettler, Urhat, Baba Echo, Tzadik, etc. And uh, the man came. The man was a Elchahit, a boiler mensch, 
And it was agreed that since it came in the summer, that he give a shear when there's a long Shabbos afternoon, and he's going to give a shear publicly. And there were Talmud of the in the town, but most important was this young, the seed was there, who was uh, considered the professional shining heat. You know, Rachel, Rusto, everything was good with it, and he came with his newly acquired son in law who just got married recently. We paid a lot of money for the son in law because ostensibly the son in law was a Ilui and could learn very well. And of course, the son in law with the father in law sat in the front row when the roof, potential roof, was about to just give, give his discourse. And he started his drusha and developed it. He was only six minutes into the drusha before the young son in law hit out and asked him about uh, an, another pshat in the Gemura which was brought down further on and he got his thoughts together and he asked him. Then another few minutes into the drusha he asked him from a toysler somewhere else and hit out at him and said to him the toysler says contrary to what you say so he says yes it's true but there's another toysler which brings both and resolves the, the problem. And the father-in-law is sitting there, you know, very satisfied and smug and comfortable with his son-in-law. Man, <laughs> I And then he was a little thrown off, but another 10 minutes went by into the drusha, and finally the son-in-law throws out the question to him that on the assault which he brought, which was supposed to resolve Machlekes, he came up with the Gemura Mepereshes somewhere else, which undermines the entire Torah which he was saying. At that point, the Ruf was already confused by the onslaught. He thought, and as he was thinking, for the answer. So the son-in-law, who was uh, more than a little outspoken, said to him, No, I will say, says on the notes, maybe we should print That's time for you to leave town. You're obviously not competent to be a rabbi. So the heat went red, closed the Gemura, and he went down from the from the drusha. Good liner, huh? One liner. He got it. He nailed it. So the story has it that this man never became a woman in the town, but this young man who just was recently married, he never had any children either for the rest of his life. So there's a price tag sometimes attached to those one-liners. They can be very costly. And if we say that there's a din of Risoini Ishes Uche, which is both for Ainuas Mumai and also Ainuas Tabuem, we should recognize that sometimes it's just really not worth it for those sharp one-liners where we get the momentary pleasure of a quick put-down, but sometimes in heaven, those remarks are not quite so favorable. I wish you all a good Shabbos.